Coming up, how to use HomeKit, a Sherlock app that you still should download, and I'll show you how to take dictation the easy way. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Calm, the number one app to help reduce your stress, relax your mind, and help you sleep. Get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash iOS today. What happened? I get an empty seat here. You know why? Megan Maroney is in Kauai. I'm so happy for her. But you know Megan. She wouldn't leave without leaving us a great replacement. And guess who's here? Micah Sargent of Chihuahua.coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like air horns should play after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Micah. How are you? Hello. I am doing great. Yeah, I, I'm no Megan, but uh, we, we both start with M, so I guess that works. Close enough. And <laughs> you're a perfect person for Dave and today. And by the way, Michael will be back next week, and we're going to do a fun show for you next week. We'll talk about that in a second. But you're a good person for today because I don't know anything about HomeKit, but you are an IoT guru. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I love all the connected home stuff. And Apple has made some updates with HomeKit that will be coming as part of iOS 13 and, you know, changes to tvOS and macOS and HomePod and, and all that jazz. And so there's a lot to sort of talk about as we are creeping ever closer to those changes that are taking place. Good. HomeKit tips today on iOS today. I have the pieces of HomeKit <laughs> in my hands broken. No, uh, I have a Home uh, Pod, the Apple speaker. That's mm -hmm. that can be a base station. I have an Apple TV that can be a base station. I have an mm -hmm. iPad that could be a base station. I even have some home automation stuff. I have Hue lights. I that have works. Uh, I connect plug sockets. So there's a few things I could do, but. One of the things I find, and I bet you others feel the same way, is that HomeKit and any home automation takes a lot of energy to set up. And it's also somewhat fragile. You know, you, know, you have a great ecosystem, and then something breaks. Mm. I'll give you an example right now. It's plaguing me. Somehow I deleted my second factor authentication for I, if this, then that, which is a, often a common part of home automation. And so I have an if this, then that account I can't get into, which is still <laughs> automating things. Oh no! This is that's a nightmare. A nightmare. I'm, you know, they yeah. say call us and we can deactivate it. And I just, you know, I'm, I don't. Oh no! So I have to. We don't I, call people. Call call you? What are you talking about? Never heard of it. So I am always reluctant, but I, then people like you come on and get me all excited about it all over again. What should we? Let's. Yeah. What do we need to know about the new home kit? Well, so there, like I said, there are a few changes that are coming. Um, one of those is going to be what what's called HomeKit Secure Video. Uh, this is actually super exciting because I, I kind of want to. We'll get to it, but I sort of want to talk about. You know, you mentioned sort of the the fragility that sometimes takes yeah. place. This and, is something Apple announced at WWDC a couple of weeks ago, and yes, it will be out correct. with iOS 13. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct okay. as well. Um, and this kind of speaks to the benefits of using HomeKit sort of as your all-encompassing control for different devices because with, and, and I'll explain the, the feature in just a second, but I sort of want to talk about the, the bigger benefit here and talk about, you know, you mentioned the fragility. Uh, with Amazon and with uh, Google's Assistant, a lot of the stuff that they are doing, and with If This Then That, a lot of the stuff that's going on with those companies, they are uh, connecting your devices over the internet. And right. so your devices hit a server somewhere and then the, you know, the whatever happens and then that command comes back down and tells things what to do. With HomeKit, it's all based around your local area network. And so those connections take place right there in your home. And that's why you have things like the Apple TV, the HomePod there to, to help kind of communicate with these different devices. Right. So... Let's talk about HomeKit Secure Video. Right now, there are different HomeKit-enabled cameras out there, but 
all they do is uh, you you know you can you can check in on your home and see what what's going on. You can get notifications for motion, but if you want to be able to sort of look back throughout the week or the month or the year, then typically you have to get a subscription that you pay to Logitech or you pay to uh, I pay Yuffie. Google right now for Google Nest. I have several Nest. Nest cameras and it's expensive. It adds up. Yeah. It gets very pricey. Uh, some of the benefits are, that are included are it sends your video to the server. The server then, you know, does its its um, artificial intelligence magic right. to determine, oh, was this just a pine cone that flew past the screen, or right. was this actually someone trying to break into your home? Right. With uh, HomeKit Secure Video, it is going to let you hold on to these recordings uh, without you having to pay any extra so the way oh. that it works see this is why google would never sign up a lot of these companies won't sign up because this is their their revenue model is yeah. storing video and charging you for it that's how they make money on the cameras yeah. and i'm honestly surprised the companies that are on, on board with this i don't know why a company would want to do this but logitech it, is anchors eufy is mm -hmm. and net atmo which i remember from a long time ago was a weather station uh yes. maker but they do cameras too, I guess now. Yeah, they do cameras and they've got uh, room sensors and things like that. Um, so if you have a 200 gigabit or gigabit, if you have a 200 gigabyte uh, iCloud storage plan, then you can have a single camera that has 10 day oh, recording oh, enabled. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh -huh. oh, wait a minute. So I do have to pay for storage. I have to now, buy iCloud storage. You, you have to buy iCloud storage <sighs> separately but it doesn't count against your storage. Oh, but do you have to Does have a 200 sense? gig plan? Yes. So, so that's the, a, and that's what a buck 99 a month, I think. Uh, 200 gigabyte, I think, is 299 a month. 299 now. Okay. Yes. Uh, so and then okay. If you, so if I had just the 50 gig plan, I couldn't use this. That's my understanding oh, as it stands right interesting. now. Interesting. I didn't know that. They kind of buried that. Yes, they did. And, and I mean, it was on stage. It was uh, it showed up on, you know, behind um, yeah. Air Force One. But yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah, it's kind of buried a little bit. So that's what we call Craig Figarigi, by the way, because he's got. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Craig Figarigi, Air Force One. <laughs> um, got a little uh, inside baseball there. If you have a two terabyte plan, that's the nine ninety nine a month plan. Then you can have up to five cameras. Now, again, <sighs> that won't count against your storage limit. You okay. get 10 days of recording. But you are buying. You still have to buy iCloud storage. So it's not it's free. Like, it's not, yeah, it is not entirely free. And that does, you that know, it's like, okay, me. this is Apple that's making misrepresenting you know, money. It. That's misrepresenting. It is. I think it. so. I think that's fair to say. I will say this is the one pro of this. We talked about the, you know, the sending it to the server to determine if is it a pine cone or is it a burglar? Yeah. yeah. Does um, Apple which, do that? No, because they're not looking at your video, right? They Isn't that the thing not, they're promising is privacy? That is correct. You, they're going to use your local home hubs ah, to do that artificial clever. intelligence stuff. So there's so, enough. There's enough uh, power in a home pod that speaker to do that. Apparently, really. Apparently, that's interesting. That's, yeah, I, I'm I'm fascinated by it as well, and I doubt that it's going to have the level of ability that some of the more uh, oh, I, an Apple TV has a processor, a HomePod has a processor, but they're not. I mean, maybe an iPad, but they're not super smart compared to maybe they, maybe I don't know. Maybe it doesn't take much. I, well, and that's true. I think for me, I could see, I don't see it being as strong as something yeah. like, I think doesn't Nest let you, it tells the difference between like a, a pet yeah. and an actual yeah. human being. It doesn't I don't know do it well. Oh, well, <laughs> there you so, go. So maybe, maybe. And then, and then there's the Wise Cams, which are really inexpensive, $20, and they have local storage, and but they don't charge you for monthly storage. They also connect to your phone. And nobody's looking at it, but they don't have the AI features. So if you wanted free, free storage, there are companies that offer free storage. Yeah, or and there no are several that do uh, just a card inside. Yeah, that's um, what the Wise Cams do. You put a little tiny uh, micro SD card in there and you could store a week, if you want, worth of video, depending on the size of the card. So this is interesting. So Apple will... So <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now let me get this clear. They do want the video stored on iCloud but they're not going to look at it. 
Yeah, end to end encrypted, and the smart. Well, and, and I want to emphasize this. I say this every time, but it's important to mention encrypted from everybody but you and Apple, because Apple can see it. See the video. They have your keys to iCloud. They always have. Oh, I see. So when they say encrypted, it's not what I think of when I think of end-to-end -end encryption, which is that only I have the keys. It's more like Dropbox encryption, where I have the keys and the company holding the data has, has the, keys. the keys. In this case, it's Apple. So, but they promise we, <laughs> we, we won't, won't look. Do it. I promise we won't look. And all the AI, all the recognition. Now, we, has anybody tried this to see how well the AI on device AI works? Um, not that I've seen. In and fact, my qu other question is maybe they are going to require that the hub be an iPhone or an iPad where there is enough horsepower in order to do the home yeah. sit home yeah in order to do that and and you know we I don't know that we're going to be able to do an early look at this because of the fact that it requires updates to the the camera companies you know like yeah. Logitech and those they're so going they'll to have, have to, to ship special home kit cameras I well they've already got home kit cameras but I'm sure it's going to take a firmware update yeah it's because they it have to be store, start storing it on iCloud and yeah, then you'll so it'll have be to have iOS that. 13, and you'll have to have an iCloud account of, at, at some kind, maybe as much as 200 gigabytes a month. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so as there, always, the headlines, there. Yeah, the headlines always sound a little better than when you read the fine print. It's a little fine print. <laughs> got it. Uh, other than that, we've got uh, HomeKit-enabled routers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this Now, is Apple doesn't make a router. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They stopped, not in the router business. They stopped making the airport extreme. They don't make any airports. So who's routers? Uh, Eero is one of the companies, okay. which is owned That's by Amazon. Use. And a sponsor um, of ours. Okay. Oh, golly. I think I, I can't remember who else is on board. Eero was the one that stood out to me because that's what I use at yeah. home. Yeah. Um, but they've got it like three or four that they're working on right now. And I imagine more Char will come. Charter because... Spectrum, it says. Oh, nice. And Linksys. Okay. Linksys and Charter Spectrum and Eero are going to be the three. And when I think about, you know, I like that a, a cable company is on board with this because a lot of people end up just going with sure. the modem plus Wi-Fi sure. router that they get from their, yeah. their cable company. Uh, this is a super simple uh, thing. <laughs> HomeKit enabled routers, what it's going to do is it's going to firewall between all of your stuff that you connect to normally, your computer, your iPhones and iPads and things like that, and then your HomeKit enabled devices. So that even if someone were to somehow gain access to one of your HomeKit enabled devices and then try to use that to get onto your home network, it will be completely sort of in its own little quarantined zone that's separate. So at most, I guess, they'll be peeking in at your home and turning on and off your lights, but at least they don't have access to your computer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's nice, but it's not, um, it's not, I don't know, it's not anything big, I guess, is, is how I feel about this it. This is the challenge Apple faces with all of this. I think consumers definitely do trust Apple and they definitely do want privacy. But the problem is that Apple's uh, walled garden is not as appealing to third parties because, mm -hmm. as we mentioned earlier, they might want to charge you for storage for the cameras uh, or these router manufacturers might say, hey, we want to do this or we want to offer more features because Apple, this is always a trade-off when you, when you want to protect people's privacy. You can't do as much with their data. And uh, I'll be interested to see how this changes. For instance, Eero has a euro plus plan that filters all your traffic for uh malware and uh and ad tracking and all sorts of stuff i i wonder if it'll be an either or that you can use apple's secure uh router for home kit or euro plus it might be a because it may not have oh. the same capabilities you see what i'm saying Right. Yeah. That would really make me sad because I, I use Euro Plus uh, features too. myself. I yeah. love Euro Plus, yeah. Yeah, but hopefully, I mean, because I, I see it sort of as all we're doing is sort of making like a guest network and we're taking that guest network ah, and we're firewalling it away. Okay. And instead of a guest network, it's just an Internet of Things network that's separate from everything else. Well, we know so, that that's a really good idea and uh, a very important thing to have. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad that that, that will be, if that's what it's for, that will be the best part. That that will be a very good thing, I think. Yeah. Because um, right now, and we should explain this just, 
I like to explain this stuff. Sorry. Uh, if you have an a Internet of Things device, a camera or a router or anything that's connected to the Internet on your home network, and it's got a security flaw, bad guys can use it as a as an open door into your home network. And that's of real concern. They could maybe look at your cameras or look at your computers. And so the idea of saying, let's take our Internet of Things devices, which aren't always secure, and put them on a separate network is a really great idea. We've talked about it a lot on our security show and, and other places. The problem, of course, is if Apple, is it going to support all IoT devices? No, probably just HomeKit devices. Just right? HomeKit, yeah, for yeah. sure. And so that's a limited subset of all of your IoT. It won't include your Amazon Echoes. It won't include your Google Homes. Uh, there'll be a lot of stuff that actually isn't on that private IoT network. So again, as usual with Apple, everything works better <laughs> If you're in the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> if you're in the, yes. And <laughs> Apple's problem here is they don't make cameras. They don't make routers. So they've got to go to third parties and say, would you like to be, you know, a quasi-Apple player? Mm. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, the headline promised more than the fine print can deliver. That is indeed the case. Uh, one of the things there was no headline for, but was a headline feature for me. Um, I've always talked about how I wanted to be able to tie HomeKit scenes with uh, media. And so, for example, I quite like waking up in the morning to uh, a nice song that I can sort of dance around to while I'm drinking my water and getting ready <laughs> for the day. Um <laughs> And right now, I have to do all of that stuff manually like, like a, some kind of animal. Like a caveman. Come like on. Like a caveman. Oh. <laughs> so now I can set it. When uh, we get this update, uh, I can set it so that my wake-up scene includes turning on the lights and also playing music on something like my HomePod or AirPlay 2 speakers or my Apple TV. So it doesn't matter the device, you know, of those three. If you've got some AirPlay 2 speakers in your house, if you've got a HomePod or you've got an Apple TV, then it can play media to those devices, including, you know, music or a podcast or something like that. So I'm pumped about being able to add that to my scenes. It's essentially an automation. Um, and then the other change that I think is kind of neat is that the Apple TV itself can be controlled with Siri shortcuts uh, or you know an automation in this way. So I can say, hey, when I hit this scene, which might be like a movie night scene, it dims the lights. It, um, I don't know, changes the temperature down a little bit so that it's not too hot while we're all snuggled up on the couch. And then it also finds the TV that I've selected in the app and turns it on and then it can even go as far as to launch an app on that tv so it knows which apple tv you've chosen and then from there it populates a list of apps to choose from based on what you've installed on that apple tv and it can start that you know start that app so i would start like the the itunes video app or what have you uh so i I really like how far they're sort of connecting all of these different devices and making it possible now for us to automate these devices that have kind of existed within the home app for a while. Um, if you have a home pod, then you know that you know you can launch the home app and see that little tile. And right now there's not a whole lot you can do. But when iOS 13 hits, then there will be more to do in terms of automations uh, that make it I think quite exciting. I like that idea, and it'll work nicely, I imagine, with Siri shortcuts, uh, and yes. that's going to make automation a lot easier. This is really what uh, all of the companies who are big in IoT are doing. Amazon has its kind of scenes. Uh, Google has routines. Its scenes, I routines. think they call them. Yeah. And the problem is that they they all work best with devices that are all from their their company, and and so. Uh, it's still a situation which has always been with home automation. This is always, I didn't mention all three problems. The third problem with home automation is that it's a tower of Babel, that there are different protocols and mm -hmm. you, nothing, you know, that you had to kind of cross protocols. We were getting closer to kind of solving that with things like the Smart Things Hub that spoke, all, you know, Z-Wave and Zigbee and 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 now we're moving back into these little silos where, well, but if you really want to do all the cool stuff like you know, routines or scenes, which are which I think is the most useful thing you can do with yes. home automation. Well, it would be it would be better. It would it would only work if you own all the stuff in our ecosystem. They don't go cross ecosystem very well. 
And so I guess it's frustrating. If, have you decided? I mean, I'm sure you've used all of them. Have you decided I'm going to go with uh, the Apple and just go all in on HomeKit or? Well, so here's the good thing. Um, I found that nine times out of 10, if you get a HomeKit enabled device, it's also supported by the Amazon Echo. Ah. Uh, works with uh, ALEXA. So there's, uh, the, there's the solution. In the, yeah, at least you kind of go parties. for what is it? The lowest common denominator. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That makes sense. Be it's the hardest one to uh, to get certification for. And so once the company's gone that far, it's right. easy to check the boxes might on the other two. Let's well do the easy guys as well. Yeah. yeah. And Apple's made, the, the good news is Apple's made it much easier to get HomeKit certification. Used to have mm -hmm. special hardware. Now Apple just does not software. And so, and I think the really good thing and the thing that's going to attract many of us is Apple's commitment to privacy and security. Uh, you'll know if you get a HomeKit enabled device that it's secure and private. And I think that's for a lot of people, that's going to end up being the deciding factor. Yeah. My favorite thing is that I don't have to use a third-party app to set up any right. HomeKit-enabled device. Right. If I don't want to, I can just go into the Home app and set it up there. I'm not making an account that then ties my identity to that device and then you know connects over servers and stuff like that. It is a requirement by Apple in order to market your product as works with Apple HomeKit that you can set up the device without ever launching or, or downloading and launching a third-party app. Do you have a, a favorite HomeKit hub? Is there one that you think everybody... In other words, is is Apple TV as capable as iPad, as capable as HomePod? Or Oh, that's a good question. I like the Apple TV the most simply because uh, I, I, I don't... I've had it... It's worked the longest for me, I guess. You know, before anything else was the Apple TV. And so Apple's kind of had the longest opportunity to, to fix bugs, to right. troubleshoot with that one. And there's... You know, I don't know that necessarily, you know, the iPad, it's cool that it can do that, but not everybody's going to leave their iPad at home. Yeah, you have um, to leave it. Do you have you can't take it out of the house, right? Yeah. If you want to use it as a home hub, right. it needs to be in the house. Right. Uh, and Apple TV, like you don't, you're not really taking it with it's, you. It yeah, makes sense for does. it to be in the home. The other yeah. real advantage uh, is that you have a screen uh, compared yes. to a home pod. So if you, once these cameras come online, you'll be able to look at the camera uh, out. I'll put on your TV. You could probably mm -hmm. even set it up that if there's somebody at your doorbell and you have a HomeKit enabled doorbell, that the TV turns on and shows you who's at the door. Like, hey, I want to know who's at the door. I think and, that's great. Yeah, that's and, and you know there are some other companies that are doing that. I imagine that the oh goodness, what's the the Echo Show for example? Right. Uh, I yeah, know you works do with some of those doorbells. I love that, to but do you that. have to ask it. You could say, "Show me who's at the front door." I have a Ring doorbell. The show will show you a picture, but it takes a, a, a like a twenty seconds to kind of connect. <laughs> then the person's and, left. By yeah, but then they yeah. go. You see them walking away, but that's nice. Yeah, uh, you see the package on the step. There's one other, maybe a fourth issue. Now I'm going to add raise with IoT, right. and it's something that this is going to end up being very important. I don't know if you remember at, at uh, beginning of the month, Google went down for a Sunday afternoon. A lot of Google was unusable. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A number of smart devices stopped working. In the Nest, for instance, people couldn't set their temperature, but the baby monitors, some of them stopped working. But the thing that really concerned me, some smart locks <laughs> stopped working, which <sighs> means unless you had a manual override, you couldn't get into your house. I can't imagine <laughs> uh, ever, ever setting myself up for failure like that i would never get a lock that doesn't have a manual override i think so yeah somebody uh, complained on twitter that uh, i can't use my nest lock to let guests into my house because of course nest is hosted in the google cloud so they're Oof. sitting there trying to open the door i don't know maybe they could get in but this, the guests couldn't get out in but still that's Something to be aware of. Especially if you'd like planned that day, you know, for yeah. the guests to come over or something yeah. worse. Like, <laughs> I don't know, there's, uh, I, I left the stove on and yeah. you tell your neighbor, the neighbor wants to come over and help you and they can't. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Are there any home kit enabled uh, uh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide monitors, things like that? Does First Alert support home kit? Uh, oh, I can't remember if First Alert does, but I know that... Um, there are a few Good. that okay. that have recently come out. Um, Apple kind of keeps a list of all of their different sensors and things on their site. And so that includes here uh, the, oh goodness, is it ConnectSense? That's a, 
Oh, the Eve Smoke. Elgato Eve. has. Yeah, I Eve like Home the Elgato stuff. It, I think Me more too. and more I'm liking that Eve stuff. Is all the Eve stuff from Elgato? And and of course, you and I, as longtime Apple users, will remember Elgato for their video devices, their TV tuners. Mm -hmm. um, and now they've pivoted because, well, nobody really wants a TV tuner anymore. But uh, they make these home uh, devices. And I know Megan loves hers. You are you kind of all in on the Eve stuff now? I love Eve. Yeah. Um, Eve is nice. It's Bluetooth enabled. Most of the stuff, uh, there are a few Wi-Fi enabled devices, but most of it's uh, Bluetooth enabled. And so, you know, a lot of times the problem can be if you've got a bunch of Wi-Fi stuff on your network, right. then you can have right. trouble kind of connecting with these. So it makes it a little bit easier. And um, if you've got those home hubs, then they will also communicate with your Bluetooth enabled devices. So you have access to those. Um, and I do want to update NetAtmo has a smoke alarm. Okay. Okay. First Alert does have a smoke alarm, okay. Okay. including one that's also a carbon monoxide detector. That's, I think, one thing that would be very good for your home kit. Of course, you know, <laughs> you know, we would have known the house was burning down except that Google was offline. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a good... We're, we're getting there. We're, yes. It's funny. We've been getting there for more than 10 years. We're getting there. We're and, getting there. And with Apple's help, maybe we'll finally get to the point where it's, A, easy to automate your home. B, it continues to work even though, you know, even things though the change network's down. or the yeah. network's down. Uh, and, and C, you have an, a, a broad enough range of devices that you can do all the things that you want to do. And I think that was one problem with HomeKit early on. But now there's yes. really that, like with Eve, look at all the things they offer. The ecosystem is really getting broader. And that's nice. Yeah, there's a page um, on Apple's website that has just the list all of, of all things. of the HomeKit enabled yeah. devices it's that pretty they support. Good now. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, it's kind of sad because I know that. I've talked about this before. When HomeKit first launched, the narrative that went out there was that it sucks. You can't, there's nobody that does anything for it, et cetera, et cetera. And for some reason that is stuck with, you know, kind of like the, the, the folks who listen to tech podcasts. And so there's this huge kind of narrative out there that it's not great. And the fact is, I think it rocks at this point. It really works well. And again, if you sort of go for, okay, I'm going to get HomeKit enabled devices and then I can pretty much be sure that it's going to work with ALEXA and the Google Assistant. Yeah, uh, you could see it's it's a long list too. So, and these are speakers. There's a lot of lights. Wow. <laughs> uh, so many switches, lights. So many lights, so many outlets. Outlets are nice because that means that anything I plugged in outlets. can be uh, HomeKit enabled. Uh, you know, you might've thought thermostats. Oh, Nest owns this. No, there's a lot. Honeywell... NetAtmo. NetAtmo seems to be really going all in. Windows mm -hmm. and coverings, fans, air conditioners, humidifiers, air purifiers, sensors. It goes on and on and on. This is a And with IKEA, they, you know, IKEA has several different I think well-priced devices in different areas and they are working on, it used to be that if you wanted HomeKit enabled blinds, um, which I always thought was kind of cool or window coverings of any sort, you had to spend like $90,000. <laughs> it was very expensive, but IKEA is working on an inexpensive way to add HomeKit enabled blinds to your house. And I think that's exciting. I think people like you, Megan, Stacy Higginbotham, you're the pioneers taking the arrows in the back as you charge <laughs> forward with home automation. But I'm watching with great interest because at some point the benefits will outweigh the pain. And uh, and mm -hmm. then and then maybe, you know, I, I dabble. I dabble. But maybe yeah. then I'll sit down and automate the whole thing. But my wife will kill me because she'll say, now I can't even turn on a light anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad enough I couldn't watch TV. <laughs> it's just that's, this remote honey <laughs> that's where you have to go for the stuff that gives the same functionality yeah. that you had before things were smart uh and that's why i swear by like in-wall switches yes. in-wall outlets and things yes. like that as opposed to the the stuff that yeah you have to control via your voice or Stacey what have you was talking about that i don't know if they're the lutrons but now you can get switches that you can turn on and off as well as use your voice but voice is so great for, for home automation, if if you've got these, you know, uh, Siri scenes and the automation set up, it's really great to say, good morning, Siri, and then have everything, you know, your your theme for the, the day and starts, your weather yeah. and your, all of that stuff. I, uh, I look forward good. to that day. That'll be fun. Then we'll be living yeah. in the future. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Michael, do you, uh, Michael, do you write on this, write about this on your website? 
No, I so I do still uh, write for iMore. Okay, good. Um, on, good. Yeah, on occasion, and so you can you can stay posted for more about uh, HomeKit as we continue to to see these changes take place. Um, I will be writing about some of the new devices that will be or or new updates to devices that will be shipping as part of the home kit updates so stay posted on iMore for those yeah we'll be really watching with uh, with interest as this uh, evolves and and you know that when i start saying okay i got everything set up now that cuz i have it's here and there like i have a ring doorbell i have echoes and googles and home pods and i have all the bits and pieces yeah you never got the puzzle pieces there. yeah it's really a puzzle at this point i've never <laughs> sat down and assembled all the bits and pieces it's just at this point too much work all right we've got questions mike has got answers we've got products is there anything else we want to say about home kit before we uh, move on i think we I think we really think we got it talked yeah. about the new stuff that's coming in ios 13 it's very exciting our show today brought to you you'll like this mike up by calm Oh, get calm. I love calm.com, C-A-L-M dot C-O-M. I'm a premium member and have been for, must be a couple of years now. Calm is a great way to sleep better, to reduce stress, to relax. If you're having a hard time focusing these days, I, so are we all, right? We're constantly staring at screens multitasking, binge-watching, hyper-connecting, overstimulated. The modern world is stressful. So take advantage of Calm, the number one app. Not, ju not just for meditation, although meditation is a really big part of it. Here, let's uh, listen to the Daily Calm, a daily meditation that's part Welcome of your... to the Daily Calm. Hi, Tamara. I'm Tamara Levitt. Hi, Tamara. And today we'll be using our breath <gasps> as a guide. To teach us how to let go. It's all about exhalation. Begin Every day a new one. These are guided meditations, but they also teach you how to kind of use the things in your life to calm, to de-stress. Sleep is really important. I love my sleep stories. There's a huge selection of, of sleep stories read by some of the biggest names, including Matthew McConaughey, Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. He has a great... Uh, tour of New Zealand that we've really enjoyed. Here's Dr. Orma's Sleep Science. You could listen to this. It will put you to sleep Hi. while you're learning about Orma. sleep. Clinical Isn't that the awesomest thing you ever heard of? Helping people with their sleep, anxiety, and stress. Oh, I man, this it's like help is on the way. The World Health Organization says stress is going to be the health epidemic of the 21st century. I know that's true in my life. As a society, we're all feeling more uncertainty, anxiety. You know, tune out the news, tune into Calm, a whole library of simple guided meditations on themes like the anxiety and creativity and focus. There's also music. I don't know if you're a Moby fan. I'm a massive Moby fan. Calm is where Moby released his new album exclusively on Calm.com. There's, there's, all sorts of beautiful music for focus, for sleeping. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep. Here's Moby's album, Long Ambience. If you like Moby, which I think he's the Mozart of the 21st century, I just think he's amazing. You'll listen to these, and they seem very simple. They're very focusing and relaxing, and yet there's something going on in here that's really fascinating and wonderful. If you're stressed, take a deep breath and get some calm. Right now, you get 25% off a Calm Premium subscription. This you, I'm, I don't know how I'd, I want to force everybody to do this. You've got to do this. Calm, that would be stressful, wouldn't it? Calm, C-A-L-M dot com slash iOS today. 40 million people have downloaded Calm, and I am a longtime happy Calm Premium user. Get your Calm Premium now. 25% off calm.com slash iOS today. It makes a great gift, too, when... Uh, when Abby was uh, getting stressed out because of, um, you know, finals, I got her set up with Calm, got her a Calm account so she can relax, my daughter. Calm.com slash iOS today. Oh, they have Calm Body now too, which is really great. They've got stretching and, uh, oh man, I just, I can go on and on. This is really a product designed to make your life better. Calm.com slash iOS today. We thank them for making a great product, for supporting iOS today. Thank you for using that special address that way 
will get the benefit. Calm.com slash iOS today. All right. Let's go back to work, Micah. Enough resting, <laughs> you lazy person, you. Let's... Uh, <laughs> I know you're you're the hardest working man in show business. Uh, <laughs> let's quickly take a, a look at some of the big news stories. Uh, Ming Chi Kuo, who is the king of supply chain, uh, he is an analyst who writes about the supply chain uh, for his customers. But he seems to have very good connections in China. He missed a little bit last time. His last prediction was a 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro, which I'm still waiting for. I really would love to see. Now he's talking about next generation iPhones. Now that we are getting a little close, close enough so that some of the stuff is, you know, production has already started probably in China. So let me give him a little credit for these. He says there will be three models. The high end model, like the 10s, will be a 5.4 inch or a 6.7 inch. Wow, that's big OLED displays. And then, as before, uh, as with the iPhone XR, there'll be a 6.1-inch lower-end model. But it's also going to be OLED. So that's interesting. Apple all in on OLED. It doesn't look like they'll have an LCD display. The other thing I found really provocative, and I don't know if this is true. Mac Rumors got this research note from Ming-Chi Kuo. The high-end models will support 5G. Right now, remember, Apple was trying to get Intel to create 5G modems for it. Intel could not. Apple finally buried the hatchet with Qualcomm, made a settlement that gave them access to Qualcomm's 5G modems for the next five years. Of course, Apple has hired many of the people from the Intel 5G team because they want to do their own 5G chips. But it's interesting. So now that they have access to Qualcomm's 5G, Quo is saying that the supply chain is telling him that 5G will go into the next iPhones. Kind of a surprise. Uh, we, th we thought it wouldn't be this year. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit sooner than we expected for sure. Yeah. But, you know, what you said before, there have been some incorrect uh he, He's made errors. Here. He's made yeah. errors. He's, he's, so, these are rumors. This is not news. Correct. Uh, I think it'd be interesting. I, you know, honestly... I don't. I wouldn't rush out and get a 5G phone because, uh, unless you happen to be one of the lucky few in a city where there's actual 5G, um, you're not going to be able to take advantage of it in most places. So, yeah. yeah. And and for me, I I'm mostly surrounded by Wi-Fi networks anyway. So right. That that L, the only thing that I would use that for while I'm out is I don't know maybe sending a message or right. sending a tweet. So I don't really need that 5G right now. I'm rooting for 5G though. Imagine, you know, right now you and I are tied to a physical you know network so that we have all the equipment and the speeds that we need. It'd be so great if we could do these shows outside in Kauai. <laughs> in Kauai. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, uh, it would be. Yeah. I don't think Kauai is going to get 5G until... <laughs> 2072. Next millennium, maybe. Yeah, Kauai. <laughs> so, I don't know. Have you played with the new iMovie? They've added green screen. I think that's really exciting. Uh, it, it It's something that uh, a lot of high-end stuff can do. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, keying is not an easy process, and so to to offer keying in an application that you know anyone can use. I can remember um, my mom asking me one time, "Hey, I want to make this little video for your sister, and what app should I use?" And I said, "Well, you might try iMovie." And she put together this video, and she was so proud of it, and you know shared it with me and everything, and. Um, it's it is nice really easy now. to use, isn't it? Nice, yeah. It, it, well, okay, so yes, yes, and no. The pro and this is I'm gonna sound arrogant, and I apologize. I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but genuinely, because I've used pro application, I've been a video producer for years and years now, and have used Adobe Premiere for a while, and then Final Cut Pro, and so. I remember one time um, I was helping a friend out who was in college and needed help with a project. And all she had on her laptop was iMovie. And so we popped that open and the simplicity of it made it... I had no idea what I was doing. It, it felt like... <laughs> it was like, too easy. 
It was. Too, it was. It was. People like, like you it, hate it when the rest of us can do your job. <laughs> no, it's not that at all. <laughs> I was just so confused. I, I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know where things were supposed to go. And it. Yeah, I know it what you like mean. I if you've wearing been wearing big gloves or something yeah, and trying to. If you've been doing timeline editing in something like uh, Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, it is a little. In fact, this new um, iMovie is even more streamlined. So, uh, which means it'll be even harder for professionals to use. And for that reason, <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really happy. That's why we're really excited yeah. about it. This is but the new no. uh, UI here, the new kind of streamlined UI. And the, oh, the other thing they've added, uh, which I'm really happy about, is uh, they've added new soundtracks. Cause, yeah. And Apple needs to do that all the time because, honestly, you know, with a limited number of soundtracks, after a while... Um, you recognize them. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I've heard that 130 mm -hmm. times. That one came from iMovie. Yeah. I like the idea of young people who are getting into, like, streaming. Uh, you know, they want to stream to, what is it called? Right. Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. Right. And they want to do whatever. Now, any, you know, young kid can set up the, the their iPhone and record in front of a green screen yeah. and pop in that keying effect. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. This is a movie I made with one still. <laughs> <laughs> over and over. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I'm inspired. Good old Ken Burns. Yeah, yeah, it's the Ken Burns effect. But that just shows you don't have to have movies to make a movie. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at it. I want to show the new soundtracks, and I, I can't figure it out either. So See? Yeah, so here's, here's filters. Who was it that didn't want Netflix to be included in uh, in award shows? Yeah, it's a guy a guy you might have heard of called Steven Spielberg. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. Why, no, I I I know who Steven Spielberg is. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't remember who was complaining, but he's also upset that now you can make a movie without movies. Yeah, yeah, it's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> None of that Netflix stuff. So here's some of the new uh, the new can't. How about this one? Can't keep checking. My iPhone. That sounds pretty good. Let's see what that sounds like. How's that sound? Sounds exactly the same. I must be. <laughs> I've done something wrong once again. How do you put it in? How do you put it in? I don't know. There we oh, go. There we go. Tap. Double tap. Can't keep checking my iPhone. Don't. So lots of new, eighty new uh, soundtracks. Nothing's funner than summer. Let me put that one in here. Double tap. Oh, maybe I have to stop it. Now I double tap it. <laughs> okay. <anyway. laughs> yeah, you did it. Stupid iPad. It's all very, uh, it's a tactile interface. You sort of have to smack your iPad to get the stuff Here's to work. Curly Whirly. Ooh. Yeah, I like the name. How do you get but it in? But can we get it in? Can you get maybe it in? Maybe. There we go. Ah, Here you go. Yeah. Here we go. Let's hear Curly Whirly. <laughs> oh, I love okay. it. It's like, uh, <laughs> oh, it's kind of repetitive. Please don't use curly whirly in your. Well, then See, it really matches the video. I'm attracted. I'm attracted to the uh, silly ones. That's my. Here's Monkey Machine. Hey, let's try this one. That's what they called me in high school. <laughs> really, Monkey Machine? Then this is your theme. Oh, jeez, Louise. So, you know, this would be fun if you sped the video up a little bit and use maybe one of these great filters. This feels like a stop motion. Like, I would do a stop motion video over the top of this. Yeah, one. That's what, exactly. And that they, have, they have lots of really fun uh, filters and stuff that you could use. Uh, Slow-mo and time-lapse and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, this, is, this is fun. Uh, that's the new iMovie. I got I to gotta play more with it. I really do. Because I feel like it'd be fun to make movies. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, uh, for sure. And, and I'm not you. I, screen. I don't want to have to carry Final Cut on a on a uh, Mac Pro on my next vacation. <laughs> yeah, I I lug around my Mac Pro. <laughs> I bet you do. So I like to make Final Cut movies. I think you do. I do. I get that feeling that you might be that guy. <laughs> the MacBook Pro is perfectly fine for okay, that. Okay, good. Especially yeah. that new 16 inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> they never released. <laughs> um, I wonder what Ming Chi was thinking about that one. So. Apple sign-in is coming soon, I hope, to a uh, app near you. Apple's yeah. rules are, of course, that the sign-in has to, if you're going to use any single sign-on stuff from Google, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you got, and you want to use Apple's, Apple's has to come first on the list. Uh, and in fact, Google, who is, I mean, this is competition for Google, but even Google realizes 
that anything like this is better than a password. Uh, I like how you said that, yeah. Leo. You the, didn't say what the headline says, yeah. which is not incredibly accurate. But Google's what you login said chief is, would rather use Apple sign-in button than keep using passwords. Uh, he didn't quite say that, yeah. No. Yeah. Basically, passwords are bad, and they should feel bad. And anything we have that are that is or are not passwords is what we should be using instead. That, right. That's much better and more secure, and passwords are bad. <laughs> uh, the Verge talked to Mark Risher, who's the product management uh, director for Google's single sign-on. And he was the, the main point of the interview, and I think the point Google would have liked to get out is, Apple's going to push that its single sign-on is more private than others. But in fact, Google's is just as private. The Google single sign-on does not send information uh, back to Google about where you use it. And he said, you know, one of the nice things about Apple or one of the things people talk about with the Apple sign-in is how you can use a phony address. But he says, really, uh, that just sends all the email from that company to through Apple. And Apple gets access to it. So you ah. have to decide uh, which you prefer. Uh, so don't, in other words, Apple would like you to think, oh, the Apple sign-on is much more private or much more secure than Google's or Twitter's or Facebook's. Not necessarily. And he wanted to point out that Google, in fact, does not get information about the places you log into with sign-in with Google. That's um, good to know yeah. um, because that's something that I thought for sure. And I know with those other sign-on buttons like Facebook and, and Twitter, they'll use those as sort of a little tracking pixels, right? Yeah. So yeah. that when that gets pinged on a website, then they know you've been to that website. Um, so it's kind of nice to know that if I do use sign... Because there are some apps that I've used that simply do not i you know i'm looking all over i'm There's like no e holding the phone yeah. up right next to me yeah. like where's the use for use with email option here's a little tip though there. i used facebook single sign on on a bunch of sites and then when i deleted my facebook account suddenly i realized oh, oh crap, wow i can't get into those anymore <laughs> i hope i haven't done that i don't think I've i'll be deleting, deleting my facebook. google account he uh, richard said there was a bunch of innuendo wrapped around the release that suggested only one of these sign-ons is pure and the rest of them are kind of corrupt and obviously as product manager for Google's, I don't like that. We only log the moment of authentication. It's not used for any sort of retargeting. It's not used for any sort of advertising. It's not distributed anywhere. And it's partly there for user control so they can go back and see what's happened. In fact, if you go to the Google security checkup page, you can see the apps that you've used the Google sign-in with, and you can go and break that connection. That's one of many reasons why uh, single sign-ons like Apple's and Google's are better than passwords. You can revoke permission. Uh, you can't do that if you just give them a password. You have to figure out a way to cancel the account and all that stuff. So uh, I would love to go into my Facebook account and revoke all of those. I should have done that before I deleted my Facebook yeah, account. I didn't think about that. Just a tip. <laughs> if there you're you go. going to do that, revoke first, okay? <sighs> Maybe go in. Most of those sites will let you create a uh, email login and password. I hope you did that. Because I didn't. I was stupid. I was in you such a both. hurry. You did the yeah, same thing? Yeah, I was thing? like, I'm yeah. so excited to get rid of this stupid <laughs> Facebook account. Get rid of that. I downloaded my data from their site, and then I was like, you're getting out of here. <sighs> iOS, uh, TVOS, not iOS, TVOS. By the way, we call this iOS today because, in fact, they're all iOS. But now yes. it's iPad, I, I, it's now iPad I, OS, iPhone OS, TVOS, Watch <laughs> OS. But it's all iOS. Yeah, but HomePod OS, is HomePod iOS OS. As well. They all have their own OS. But honestly, let's let's Leo OS. Leo OS. TV OS. If you're on the beta, TV OS 13 beta two has picture in picture multitasking for Apple TV, which is, I think, really cool. So you can be watching uh, something and reduce it down to a picture in picture and play a game or. Oh, Leo, thanks. I genuinely, when if, there are people getting excited about this feature and the whole time I'm going, why would you want to do world, that? Do I want to minimize a video and right. have it or te television show and have it in the corner? It makes sense on my iPad because I might be doing other input tasks or on my computer because again, other input tasks are like, what do people do on a TV that's not just watching other TV stuff? Right. But yeah, I guess if you're playing a game, that there's other things you can do, you know? Uh, yeah. 
So I think that's that's a good idea. It also adds multi-user support, which I think is really important. Uh, so I'm excited th about that. Yeah. So if you have multiple people in your family and your household and you want to have each of them, the problem is with kids mostly for me is, uh, and I, unfortunately I don't have any little kids in the house anymore, but when they were little, you know, their, their recommendations, they're, they're actually, it's still a problem because they're all using my Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a problem for everything. I and for an example, I can remember not too long ago, my partner was like, "Oh, I want to show you this YouTube video." So hops on my phone and and looks it up. And now and you every yeah get it's the all recommendations. This, uh, Je Jenna Marbles gal. That's oh no, he showed you now. Jenna Marbles. Yeah, because she got... has dogs. She has dogs, yeah. so like it made sense. But She's yeah, funny. now it's all She's Jenna good, Marbles. But that's the problem. <laughs> If you give Google a signal, they're going to take it and run with it. <laughs> Just like pour the water down your throat. <laughs> Have more. More well, Jenna Marbles. <laughs> uh, uh, but I want to say with, with, with the um, multi-user support, what I'm excited about, um, Apple has set it up so that uh, it's it's a framework so that developers who make third party apps for the Apple TV, um, when you change the single sign on, I keep saying single sign on. When you change the user for multi user on your yeah. Apple TV, yeah. individual apps can also sync with that. And so my Hulu account will be my Hulu account. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, whenever I change that. So you know the developers have to enable that feature, right. but it's a framework that's set up to make it. And I, I say in quotes, easy, because right. I know nothing is easy when it comes to developing, but it's it's uh, as easy as it can be. That's a big improvement because I, uh, and this was something they added recently in Apple uh, TV, which was the ability to sign into your cable account and then automatically uh, give that cable, those cable credentials to HBO Go and all the other, you know, Showtime and all the Anytime and all the other ones. And that really simplified life for me, it was, it was speeding yeah. things up. And so it'd be nice if we had different accounts uh, we could say to TVOS. Okay, now I'm now it's Micah's account. Let him sign. I hope things. Netflix does this because I know Netflix and Apple aren't the best of friends, but yeah. I hope Netflix does. They don't this support feature. anything that Apple supports. Netflix at least has profiles within the Netflix app, so you can. Yeah, I hope that they'll. Nobody do ever that uses that, by the way. My kids li log into my. Oh, I do. I wish I, my kids would. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. I, I, I set down my, you know, my foot. I said, listen, if you're going to use my account, you got to use the guest account. Who I keeps watching my... John Wick on my Netflix account? <laughs> Who's doing that? All right. You ready for some questions? Oh, I'm so ready for some in questions. In fact, some of our questions are answers to questions from last week, but we'll explain that in a Whoa. second. First, let's start with Joseph. My boss recently moved from Android to iOS, and he's having trouble finding... I hope you can help. A snoozable alarm clock that plays his own music is the alarm sound. My wife has the same alarm sound in her the chimes on her Apple on her iPhone for years. Here's some good news. You it's can. So you can. Yeah. Will you walk me through this? I would love I'm to. I'm going to open the uh, clock so this you see you have all these alarms. Yeah, now what? So what do we, let's do we want to go with an alarm we already have or do we want to start with a new alarm let's do the 7 a.m alarm we don't okay, need it so, so up I'll, in the top left corner hit the edit, edit. Button. okay there you go that's the now first thing tap on the seven o'clock a.m okay. alarm yeah now tap on sound oh my god now and then she down. uses you know uh the the i think this one anyway no not that anyway i'm sick of it i want to hear something new but it doesn't look like scroll i have other up. choices scroll up, maybe Keep going all the way up to the oh, top. Oh, now this is sounds, from my. That's from my mm -hmm. iTunes. Look at iTunes. You can get buy tones, download all purchased tones, or I could Tap pick a on, song. Uh, pick yeah, a, pick song a song from your music library. Son of a gun! I think Look at that, that this is. I'm going to make it fanfare for the common man because then when I wake up, I'm going to really feel like something. First of all, it starts Leo, slow. I think you should make it Baby Shark. <laughs> well, to each his own, Mr. Sergeant. To each <laughs> his own. Uh, yeah, oh, so that's nice. A, that's easy. Good news. You don't have yeah. to get any third-party app. You can just keep using the clock app that's built right into nice. your phone. And you can have the snooze on if you want. Make sure you turn it on if you want the snooze. And then you can hear fanfare for the common man every five minutes. Well, what is the snooze? Is it 10 seconds? I think it's 10 seconds. And 10 minutes rather than or maybe 10 it's seconds. Like, it wouldn't, 10 seconds would be oh, terrible. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Again with the alarm. Again. 
Yeah, I think it's 10 minutes. Although it's funny, I just read, um, reading, just finished Neil Stevenson's new book, and he, at the very beginning, talks about the research that must have gone into what is exactly the length of time a snooze alarm should go for. Should be, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, honestly, I like the, there are apps that, are smart about it based on your cycle. Because if you fall into a deep sleep cycle again, and then you get woken up, you're going to feel more tired. You'll be groggy. So it, it kind of depends on, you know, how you fall asleep and what sleep cycle you fall into right. and how that goes. So. Uh, from George Wood, who is a longtime listener. It's great to hear from you, George. Greetings from Sweden. One thing I wonder about from WWDC, the woman who played archived Major League Baseball audio on her Apple Watch, she says, I, as far as I know, at bat doesn't do that. It'll only do live streaming game audio. So watch carefully because she actually alludes to that in her talk. She says, we archived this just for this demo. It is not a new feature as far as I know of the iOS at bat. She even, she even said... Now, I'm going to do something you can't do because there's nobody <laughs> playing at 10 in the morning. <laughs> and, and so there you go. That, that, I think that they did, in fact, play a little trick on the Apple Watch. So movie magic. That. Little movie magic. Bob writes, thanks for recommending When Did I? That's an app we recommend. And I found it an easy way to log my shortcuts because you can run a shortcut from within another I just add the shortcut for an app action to an existing shortcut, and it's logged in the When Did I app every time it runs. I imagine this will be even more useful when shortcuts can be triggered by HomeKit automations. That's what you were talking about, uh, Micah. So just a little, a little plug for the app. When did I? When did I do that? When did I run when's that the, shortcut? When's the last time I did that? I don't remember actually that we recommended it, but. <laughs> <laughs> apparently you somebody did. Did. when somebody did, did i recommend it you needed the app <laughs> i needed when did i yeah i think it was an app cap for me it's app cap <laughs> zeke writes i would like to say thank you to leo oh thank you for the game recommendations i'd really like more of them i used to love iphone games but lately the good ones are hard to find i agree there's a lot of crap and i've given up even looking for games but i enjoyed both frost and black two of our favorite games one a recent app cap frost he likes those puzzly Apple quality games. Good news. Micah and I have confabbed, and we've agreed that next week, Apple just put out their design award winners. And there's a, a list of maybe 10 apps that are, every one of them, incredible. So next week, we're going to demo, go through all those apps. And the ones that are games, I'm going to show That's you. That's Leo's, yeah. I'm going to show you. So the, the uh, Apple, I think you're looking at 2018, but I think the, by the way, Frost was a 2018 winner. Yeah, but the 2019s are out. So we will uh, we will show you the 2019 Apple Design Award winners next week on iOS Today. Megan will still be in Kauai, so Michael will be back. And uh, Michael will take the productivity apps because he's insanely productive, and I'll do the games. <laughs> I'll do the time wasters. And then finally, an answer, and I should have thought of this last week, you remember. Um, have you had this problem with Shuffle that it will start repeating songs that you've heard? Even if you have a giant playlist, has that ever happened you know, to you? I don't know that it has. I don't like shuffle. I, I no, you don't I'm use it. Cheesy. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I don't use shuffle. So I use shuffle all the time, and I have not had this problem. But I got we got email from a lot of people who said, "Yeah, shuffle will after a period of time start repeating," and I think it must have something to do with a bad random number gen generator. That'd be my guess because mm -hmm. it's using that to figure out what to play next. But John had a great tip. He says, "My friend Mike." John is our studio manager, who, by the way, is not here today. Jammer B is uh, traveling around the country following Umphreys McGee. They're, down, they're at Red Rocks right now performing. He says, my friend Mike found a workaround. And we love Mike. He's a good friend. He's been in, in our studio many times. Who keeps For the guy who keeps hearing the same songs on shuffle, here's what you do. You create a smart playlist, and uh, here's the trick. You know, And you can put every song, if you want, in that smart playlist, but make sure that you use a criterion that says anything that I haven't played in the last three months or six months or eight months or whatever. In other words, what will happen with that smart playlist and put as many items as you can in that, uh, and he says 200 more or less items, but you could put more, is as soon as the song is played, it's gone from the playlist. It'll uh -huh. never get played again because you just played it. Yeah. Brilliant. So it'll shuffle with what's remaining. With what's remaining. Not I love that. Isn't that a clever idea? That's, that's a really great workout. So thank you, 
uh, Jammer B, and thank you, Mike, for that uh, answer to our question from last week. That's a good way to solve that problem. Create a smart playlist and just eliminate songs you've listened to in the last three months or so. Micah, do you have a hat? I do. Is it time? Time to put on the app caps. Got my pink hat today. Oh, that's attractive. Do you thank ever you. wear that anywhere? Yeah, I actually wear this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I never oh, wear man. this. It's my I dinosaur. Love that. You I, should wear that more often. I would. It's beautiful. I should. It's even got little snaggle teeth. Oh, little teeth yeah, out front. Yeah, it's really good. I think somebody sent this to us. I don't know. That's anyway, so cute. we wear silly hats, first of all, because it's fun. That's mm -hmm. honestly the real reason. But uh, also because we like to use these app caps to honor our app picks of the week. And let's, let's kick it off with you first. All right. So I am recommending an app that, as, <laughs> as Leo pointed out, recently got Sherlocked. At WWDC. Uh, and the sad thing is Casey had just released the app. Yeah, it's vignette. Um, and you know, it, it got Sherlocked, but it didn't get Sherlocked. I it's so the app basically goes through your entire contact list and it finds well, not even not even just the the contacts that don't have photos, but the contacts that do have photos if you so choose. And it will look at <coughs> the social profiles that you have linked in your contacts and the email, and it will search all these different sites: Gravatar, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc., and then use those to give you a photo for your contacts. So if you have been kind of annoyed by when you're texting someone and you just see the two initials for their name and you'd rather have a photo there, uh, this is a very easy way to do it. Like I said, it scans and you can sort of pick and choose which ones you want to change. I have it set up so that it only does ones that don't currently have a photo. And it's it's really handy. Uh, it's It's quite nice. And this is how it differs from what Apple has implemented. So Apple... In iOS 13, you will be able to choose essentially a profile photo and a name and then choose to share that with other iOS folks. So the next time when, when someone updates to iOS 13 and you have a conversation with them, then it will give them the option to sort of populate your, you know, your name and your your chosen name and your chosen photo uh, in in their iMessage conversation back and forth. Uh, so this is a little bit different because if you've got friends who are Android users, ditch them. I mean, uh, uh, if you've got friends who are Android, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Android users, then you can get their photos. If you know someone doesn't know how to set up the profile photo via Apple, but they've done that on Twitter or Facebook, then you can have that and. Yeah, I, I think this it's is a so wonderful clever. feature that I've wanted for a long time. I also I like happy it, to see it that if if you have somebody has many many social profiles, uh, you can choose which one you want to use. So in this yes. case, Lane has a different picture <laughs> on Facebook. I get, I think I like the picture I'm using yeah, for Lane. How about one. Tim Berners Lee? Let's see, he's got this is the one in my contact list, but then there's one from Facebook. <laughs> There's the same one from, oh, I like the Gravatar. Oh, that Gravatar Isn't that nice? Funny. I think I'm going to use the Gravatar for Mr. The inventor of the uh, World Wide Web, whose phone number I actually don't have, but for some reason is in my contact list. Uh, here's another one where you get, you get to choose. So there are a lot yeah. of people like me who have uh, many different thumbnails out there. And so this is a great way to figure out who you want. And then there's a very, oh, look, Renee. I can have either Renee's existing image or his Gravatar. <laughs> I'm going to use the, the image fun things. from the Gravatar. Yeah. People who have set up Gravatar sometimes forget about it. And I remembered someone tweeting about like, this app is fun or is good for what it does. But what's really fun is seeing people's old Gravatar images. Right, right. <laughs> now, it's uh, free to do what I just did. But mm -hmm. uh, Casey charges five bucks if you want to save uh, updates unlimited. And let's all pay five dollars to Casey yeah. this because yeah. this is a great app. It does do stuff that Apple's doesn't do uh poor casey released this literally 10 days before wwdc and got sherlocked it's i think the fastest sherlock in history yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh i'm gonna give i i'm gonna give him my actually i already gave him five bucks so i'm gonna restore purchases yeah. because Same. he totally deserves to get paid for this 
and uh, and yeah, it's a great it's a little very app. handy app. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. it does the thing that it says it's going to do, and I think it does it quite well. And one of the things that I've loved is that he's continued to update it, uh, even though like it just came out, and I've already seen uh, updates for it. Nice. And yeah, I think very open to to changes and things like that as well. So uh, check it out, vignette free with that five dollar in app purchase that I think everybody should throw his way. <laughs> just to, just to say, we're sorry, Case. We're sorry about the Sherlock. Oh, We're yeah. sorry you got Sherlock. All right, this one is for you. Well, it, I, you know, I it, I was thinking about you. You don't do it anymore, but you used to at iMore be the one who had to transcribe the Apple analyst call. And mm -hmm. they picked you because you're a fast typist, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Lori Gill now has that duty. I can't imagine a worse job, uh, <laughs> frankly. I don't like to do that, but I have a product. And I think I have to give credit to Farhad Manju, uh, I think at the Times, because he talked about his uh, work process. And he told me about two programs that he uses all the time. Uh, this, is, this is probably the most useful program for anybody who is a journalist or does interviews or, like you, has to, um, has to transcribe stuff. It's called Otter. And let me just, let me just, uh, you get, by the way, it's not free. Well, it is free. It's free for 10 hours of transcription a month, which I think is extremely that's quite generous. A lot. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly enough to do, you know, the, but if you do a meeting every week and you want to transcribe it, uh, shall, shall we, so this is the basic 600 minutes. Shall we just do something here? Let's start recording. So I am now recording. I'll be, let's say we're at a meeting and uh, they're, you're having a meeting and you want to take notes or maybe you're listening to an analyst call and you want to take notes. It's automatically transcribing as we go, which is really fantastic. It does a very good job. I mean, I guess this is probably using Siri and you could probably uh, do this for a limited amount of time with, you know, notepad or something like that. But I, uh, this thing will go and go and go and go and go. Plus it saves the recording. You can, so you can go back and fix it. Uh, so I really like this. If you ever have to transcribe something, uh, this is a great way to do it. There's another thing to talk about with this, which is you can have groups. So this is, for instance, an event that's going on right now, Digital Workplace Experience, and people are recording. Oh, that's so neat. The event. So if so, I really like this idea. Oh, one other thing I should mention: if you take a picture while you're recording, those pictures will be embedded into. The recording in exactly the right spot so it it, it lets like you make slides a, up on the screen yeah exactly oh, that's incredible isn't this great so i was i'm just blown away by it and uh, the accessibility I, uh implications well, here exactly. are fantastic yeah exactly so this is uh this is called otter uh it is as i said it's free right now version two is out currently uh and if you want to pay for more, it's not very expensive. If you do a and if you certainly, <laughs> if you do a lot of transcribing, it will be worth it. I think it's very accurate. I think it does a really good idea, uh, a job of this. Um, you can record from Wi-Fi to the cloud directly, or you can set a limit on local audio in case you don't want to fill up your iPad. Um, you can lock it with Face ID if you've got if there's you know confidential stuff in here. It also allows you to turn off iOS Auto Lock so you can keep it running in the background. Oh, with, on your, yeah, that's really important. It supports Bluetooth microphones as well. So a lot of times with the lecture, uh, your iPad may be too distant, but you could put a Bluetooth microphone and get much better uh, audio quality. Uh, I'm running in dark mode because I'm not a cave. Because always. Because always. Yeah. Uh, so really a very nice uh, Otter Notes, a very nice. And I think if you're a student, um, if you're, uh, you know, there's there's just a lot of uh, stuff in here that you were really I love it for the idea of being able to attend a conference without actually being there. Isn't that that's great? Just, oh, that's yeah, and so I don't cool. know how this works. I mean, it's just if you go to Otter Notes, you'll see the stuff as it's going. I would love it if they would do more of this stuff because that's a really good idea. And if you're at a conference... Uh, with the permission, of course, of the conference organizer, maybe you'd like to add your recordings to uh, Otter Notes so others can attend. I think it's a really great idea. Uh, Otter Voice Notes. It's from otter.ai. You know, that makes me think that they are you might be using their own recognition. Proprietary recognition. Yeah, as opposed to 
uh, something uh, on Siri. It's very, very good. It does a better job than maybe than anything else I've ever seen. Highlighting. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. I think their editing features are, are yeah. really good as well. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that nice? Yeah. Record and review in real time. Search, play, edit, organize, and share your conversations from any device. And it, it the, the deal is really amazing. You get 10 hours free recording a month. If you pay uh, eight dollars and thirty three cents a month, you can uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. Six thousand minutes or a hundred hours a month wow, plus additional. That is very generous. Additional, yeah, I think it's really good, really really good. And they have a team plan as well. Otter AI Otter Notes, and that is our app cap for today. My friend, I always love doing this show with you. You are hey, just a great guy and. Uh, is there anything you want to plug? I know you have podcasts galore. Yeah, yeah. I'll plug again. Uh, somehow I manage. Um, I, it is... I love that show. Oh, if thank you love you. The Office, you've got to have this show. Yeah. So somehow I manage. It's a podcast I do with Tiffany Arment. It's over on the Incomparable. That's Jason Snell's podcast network. Uh, check that out. If you love The Office, uh, we basically just uh, watch an episode of The Office and talk about it each week. And right now we are doing a competition. Uh, we just watched the episode where Michael uh, was trying to put together a, a local advertisement for the company. And he Daryl, he wants Daryl to do a rap. Daryl says, I don't know rap. And so Michael says he's going to put together a playlist. So we have challenged people to put together Michael Scott's playlist for Daryl Philbin what of what it would idea. look like if he was teaching Daryl rap. So yeah, get in, get into that. Check that out. You're, uh, you're just, now at season four, episode nine, and you're going to do all of them, I think. So you got yeah. your work cut out for you. One of the best episodes of The Office was the one that we just did. It's the dinner party episode. Oh and, my God, that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have to listen to this because that is the most amazing. That's the one where, <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but uh, Michael throws. Okay, yes. I just I don't want to say anything. <laughs> it's really it's, funny. Whew. If you haven't seen it, uh, see it and then go yeah, to episode 61. Watch, of Watch the episode first. If you've ever <laughs> seen or heard of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Yes. Man. You've it's, got a little bit of insight into that episode. <laughs> I can watch The Office over and over again. And it's it's on Netflix now. It's free. So yeah, you, you, there's yeah. no reason uh, not to see it. That It's hard to believe, but you say that that episode, the Dinner Party episode, aired April 10th, 2008, 11 years 2008. ago. 2008! Uh, probably the greatest sitcom of all time. It's certainly right up there with MASH and Seinfeld. Just wonderful, wonderful sitcom. Mm -hmm. uh, that one night at theincomparable.com slash S-I-M. My friends, it is time to say goodbye to all the family. Thank you, Michael Sargent. We'll see you next week. Yeah. 2019 Apple Design Award winners. That'll be a lot of fun, including some really beautiful games I think you're going to like. Uh, I'm Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye.